Oh, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today you find me in a different setting. I am actually in my office at home. I wasn't able to get to the Stuff and Things studios today, and I was actually recording a video here for this coming week, but we will get to that in a bit. We have many things to discuss on this week's Sunday Stuff and Things. I've got them written down on my notepad here, including upcoming videos. I will talk about the videos that are coming up on the channels. Um, the guitar video that I just recorded, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, Fortune favors dumb luck. I've talked about a bit about trying to get some really good nature photography or getting opportunities to photograph nature, animals in nature, and how difficult that's been for me. But I stumbled into some dumb luck recently. I'm going to tell you about that a little bit. Um, just kind of a weird little thing that I decided to bring up. We're going to talk about one of my favorite snacks. Um, it's super simple. It's really dumb, but maybe you'll love it too. And then, of course, we will have your questions in hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. Got some good questions here this week. So let's get started. All right, like I said, upcoming videos, we have, of course, the Valheim series continuing on Stuff and Things Plays. I'm getting a lot of good feedback there. Please, please check those videos out. And if you're watching those videos, please hit the like button, uh, leave comments, all that stuff. Share it if you want, subscribe, because nobody watches my gameplay videos. And I don't want, I don't mean to say that in a way that sounds as though I do not appreciate the people who do watch. I definitely do, but they just don't get seen. And it's actually interesting, when I first started posting gameplay videos on Stuff and Things, the main channel here, I would get, you know, over a thousand views because a lot of the people who watch these videos don't necessarily want to watch the gameplay videos, but I still got a fairly good amount. And I think it was just because the amount of, amount of subscribers I had, I think those videos just got, pushed in the YouTube algorithm a little bit more, but I switched to a different channel because there were quite a few people who complained about the gameplay videos being on this main channel. And definitely from what I've read and what I have learned throughout the years, it seems as though YouTube or the people who watch YouTube or maybe both together don't want channels to be too disparate in the things that they are trying to show you. So it would make more sense to have a video or a channel that was based more on video games and only focused on video games. So I took those videos out, I put them on a separate channel, and ever since then, I just don't get very many views on those videos at all. And they do take quite a bit of time, and obviously it's something I'm still going to do. I enjoy doing it. It's a nice little release to make gameplay videos. But I would love it if more people watched and there was more interaction and, and just more stuff going on on that channel. So Stuff and Things Plays, the Valheim series, it's a really fun game and uh, you should check it out. I think it's good. And then we have a video coming up. You see me here with my guitars, uh, my Fender Telecaster here. This is a 2017 American Professional Telecaster. I think they have the American Professional 2 line out but it's a little more modern. I think this is kind of more of a traditional Telecaster um, than the American Professional 2. I got this here. I've got my Rickenbacker Ugh, right here. 330, gorgeous little guitar. Um, and then my <sighs> Vox AC15 amp right here. Looks like a lot of nice gear, and I have a fairly extensive pedal board with lots of pedals on it. Um, so you would think, oh, this guy really knows how to play guitar, right? I, I love guitar, and for something that I love so much, I have put a despicably small amount of time into actually getting good at guitar. But that is something that I'm trying to remedy. Kind of late in life, I know, but I just did a video, and this is going to be a new series. We'll probably have, maybe around the first of every month, there will be a new kind of check-in with this series. But basically, it's a series about my attempts at improving as a guitar player. So this first video that's gonna be coming out this Wednesday is all about kind of where I am as a player, you know? Like I can play. I 
I can play open position chords, I can play bar chords. I can do that kind of stuff, but I can't really play lead lines. I don't know scales. I don't know, you know, some of the fancy, like, how do you even do this? Hammer-ons and pull-offs. Here, here, here we go. <laughs> We're gonna try. All that fast, fast stuff that people do. So this first video is about what I do know, what I don't know, and the things that I'm going to try to know by the end of this series. And I've picked a not really arbitrary time period of nine months. I figured that was kind of poetic. Well, we will bring my guitar playing to term, and it will be a newborn baby still in nine months. But uh, so there will still be a lot for me to learn about guitar, but maybe in nine months, I'm hoping to get to a spot where I've said, where I can say I've really improved and I've learned some of the things that I want to focus on. So that video is going to be on Wednesday and I think it's going to be pretty fun. If any of you out there play guitar or you're just kind of curious about me and music and stuff like that, you should check that video out. It'll be Wednesday on Stuff and Things. And then, like I said, I think every month or thereabouts, I will check in, I'll tell you, We'll go over the things that I was hoping to learn by that next month, see how I did, and then we'll talk about the things I'm gonna work, work on in the coming month, and then we'll just do those check-ins every once in a while. And at the end of nine months, if I have accomplished the goals that I have set out for myself, then I, I have a little bit of a reward in mind for myself. So, you know, carrot and stick, all that good stuff. So check that out. And then also, you may remember that you got to vote on the next T review that's going to be on this channel, and we decided on, or you decided, on Esoterica Stonehaven. So I believe, not this coming week, this coming week is the guitar video. I don't mean to be pointing with my middle finger, but I'm holding a pick in my fingers. This coming week is the guitar video. The week after that will be the first impressions for Stonehaven by Esoterica. Please enjoy. Hmm. All right. So I've mentioned many times now my attempts at taking wildlife photographs and how the creepy little critters don't seem to want to cooperate. I've been trying to bring my camera with me every day. So every day I go to work, I bring my camera and I've talked about the travails of the fact that, you know, I'm in the middle of a, a laborious physical job and so it's not easy for me to be like stop everybody I'm going to go get my camera and take a picture but I'm trying to have my camera with me in case any opportunity arises for me to see mostly birds things like that interesting things um, but the other day I had to get an oil change in the morning so I didn't go to work and uh, there were some other errands I had to run and we were between jobs so I basically had a day off which is what I'm trying to say there in a very roundabout way and so I went and got an oil change. I came back home and I noticed that in one of the trees in our yard, there were all these Stellar's Jays. And I guess Stellar's Jays are only like in the west of North America. So people in Europe probably don't know them and in the east coast or east of the Rocky Mountains, I think. I don't know that Stellar's Jays are around, but they're very similar to Blue Jays, but they have a larger crest and it's black. Anyway, they're very loud. They're very interesting birds, but they're kind of crazy. Um, I heard them just freaking out in this tree near my house. And I was like, what's going on? Why are they so angry? So I went out there to take a look and there was a red-tailed hawk just sitting in the tree, trying to ignore the jays. It was like looking around and occasionally like craning its neck, but it's like, you could just see the thoughts going through its head. These guys are really getting on my nerves. I'm just going to pretend that nothing is happening now. And obviously the Stellar's Jays, if they see a hawk, they're going to freak out because the hawks might kill one of them. They do hunt birds. Um, so anyway, I ran in, I grabbed my camera, and I got, I think I took about 170 pictures. I ended up towards the end up on this like shed that we have, uh, like a storage shed, precariously balanced, trying to get as close as I could to the bird without freaking it out had my 600 millimeter f11 canon rf lens and i got some really good shots i'm going to show you one now that um i think the one i'm showing you now is just a jpeg that i did a little bit of editing on i have raw files too but i haven't edited too many of those yet but i got a lot of really good pictures many of them very usable so it was just really cool to see i guess that 
it sort of hits home that you do need to have your camera all the time, and I just happened to have been home, so my camera was there. But you never know when an opportunity like that is going to jump out at you. And many people have said, you know, with wildlife, it's just you get lucky, you have to put in the time, and then also you have to take lots of pictures. And I always do. If I see something, if there's a scene in front of me that I'm trying to capture, I will take many, many, many exposures. I guess it's not exposures when it's digital. Whatever. I'll take a lot of pictures. Um, but then there's just the whole process of weeding through all those images, picking out the good ones. But yeah, I'm hoping soon that with another maybe two or three more good subjects and some good photographs, I can put together that video finally where I talk about the Canon RF 600mm f11 STM lens and my attempts at capturing some good wildlife pictures. All right, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I told you about a disgusting thing that I liked to eat. I typically eat fairly healthily. Um, my fiance cooks a lot and she makes very healthy things. I don't eat out a lot. I don't have fast food really ever. But there are some just comfort food things and they may be unique to America. I think Easy Cheese is probably unique to America. I don't know, maybe it's in the UK or something. But the other week I talked about Easy Cheese and wheat thins as just a really gross, probably horrible for you snack, but something that I just love. And I hadn't had it in forever and just like probably years, but I just randomly got a, a tube of Easy Cheese the other day. I was like, mmm, delicious. It's gross, but I love it. Here's another snack recommendation for you. It's gross, but I love it. It is Triscuits. You'll notice there's a theme here with crackers. Triscuits are kind of cracker in the US, again, I don't know how popular they are in the rest of the world, but they're like a, how would I describe it? They look kind of like giant Wheaties. Do you guys know Wheaties? <laughs> or or uh, Wheaties is a kind of cereal where it's like wheat, a square of wheat um, that looks kind of like a little flattened bale of hay. Triscuits are sort of like that too. They're like baked wheat crackers. And you take a Triscuit, just the plain Triscuit, don't get any of the weird like garden flavored or herb flavors. Plain Triscuit and then Philadelphia is a brand of cream cheese. There's Philadelphia cream cheese in the US. They have a kind of cream cheese called garden vegetable. And it was something I'd never had before. My fiance actually turned me onto this. Um, garden vegetable cream cheese. Peel off the top, take a Triscuit, scoop up the garden vegetable cream cheese and enjoy. You're welcome. No, it's, it's amazing. I love it. I don't know why. I don't know why it's so good. But for a very quick, very easy snack, or even if you're having, you know, a fancy cocktail party, just get some Triscuits and slather some garden vegetable cream cheese on there. Nobody's going to complain. The problem is I got addicted to this. So this would be the kind of thing where maybe I'd come home after a long, hard day at work and I'd usually have a little snack. I would attempt to have something fairly healthy and not really heavy, but I started doing that where I would get the garden vegetable cream cheese, dip, dip a Triscuit in there, have maybe three or four of those when I got home from work. The problem is the garden vegetable cream cheese has not been available at my grocery store. In fact, the entire cream cheese aisle was decimated. All they had was the normal plain cream cheese. And it's been like this for weeks. And I don't know what's going on. Is there some sort of run on cream cheese or flavored cream cheese in the United States right now? Is big cream cheese running behind in their production? Is COVID like influencing that in some way? In the rest of the country, I live in the Pacific Northwest, is cream cheese, especially the garden vegetable Philadelphia cream cheese available? If so, let me know. And please, if you can get that cream cheese, buy a tub, buy some Triscuits, try it out. You won't regret it. But now, gang, it is time for hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things, and I will do my best to answer you. Also, you can leave questions in the comments of my YouTube videos, or if you are a Patreon supporter, you can write to me on there. The first question comes via Twitter from Dapper Dan at Orion Cloned. Dapper Dan says... Do you use a slide or do you plan to use a slide? I understand a slide is a must-have guitar accessory. Um, I don't typically use a slide. I have owned a slide. In fact, 
I was looking for my slide recently, but it's not something I'm super familiar with. I think I tried to do, when I was writing a song years ago, I was tried to do like a little slide lead line on there, and I sort of was successful. I know that a lot of people who do slide guitar, they will have a specific guitar set up to play slide, so they'll probably have thicker strings, and they'll probably have the action a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, that's something I'd probably like to delve into. I don't know that I'd call it a must-have accessory, because slide guitar is a very specific style, usually. Um, it's usually on more kind of country stuff, but yeah, it's cool. I would like to play a little... I'll, I'll try to find my slide. I have like a metal... I keep showing you my middle finger, but I would usually have it on my middle finger. I have a metal slide. Um, next, from Kiwi Leonard, at Kiwi underscore Leonard. I was going to try to do a Kiwi accent, but I'm not going to try to do that. Glad to hear you had a good weekend off. We all need to stop and just enjoy how blessed we are. Uh, what cheap tea have you tried, thinking at first that it would not be good, but ended up being pleasantly surprised? That is a really good question, and I'm trying to think. You know, we've done our over-the-counter series on, sun on Stuff and Things, where I did... What did I do? I did Captain Black Original. I know I did something else. Was it Carter Hall or something like that? I think... I think it was Carter, Har Carter, Carter Hall. It was not bad. I didn't expect it to be good at all, and it wasn't bad. I could... I could smoke that occasionally, and I wouldn't hate it. Um, but yeah, I haven't smoked a lot of what you would consider really cheap teas. Maybe I should do some more in that series. Um, but the whole drugstore blend thing doesn't doesn't seem to exist anymore because none of the drugstores around here seem to carry any of those blends. But I guess I could always just try to have my little brother in Texas send me some. Uh, thank you for the question, Kiwi Leonard. Next from Chris Coffey at Lutheran Kleinian. Ever had a super strong tea trigger hiccups? I've had a few different Gawith blends do that to me. You know, I've heard about the Nick hiccups, and I've never had them myself. I'm fairly inured to the effects of nicotine, but um, let's say if I'm on an empty stomach and I have a blend that's really strong, I can get to that sort of kind of fuzzy-headed and then... I don't know, there's a weird feeling you can get in the back of your throat. Maybe that's a precursor to the hiccups, but I've never actually had the hiccups, and it's not a pleasant feeling. So that's when you go, you put the pipe down, and you don't touch it for a while. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. I have definitely heard of that happening, but I haven't experienced it myself. Next, via YouTube at Zakazak. Or no, I'm going to save this one for the last. This is kind of a, an important one. We have one from PhDIM. Why my pipes taste like burning after two uses only? My first try were very nasty. I'm new to pipe. I'm assuming PhDIM is an international viewer. Thank you for writing in. Um, why do your pipes taste like burning after only two uses? I don't know. I'm wondering if you are cleaning your pipes properly and thoroughly. Obviously, there's going to be some residue left when you use a pipe. Um, most often it's going to be the odor, and typically it shouldn't affect the taste too much if you clean the pipe thoroughly. So look into that. You can look into my, uh, what do I even call that series now? My how-to pipe series. I'll talk about cleaning in that. Uh, and next from The Smoky Compadre, I can't name a video you haven't recommended to try. I'm assuming you're trying to say you, you can't think of a video in which I haven't recommended the blend that I was trying. Is there a blend you tried and said, nah, I'm not recording this video? Um, no, there's never been a blend where I recorded something and or where I was going to record it for the video and then it wasn't good and so I didn't. But there have certainly been blends, maybe you just haven't seen them, where I have not recommended them once I tried them. I can think of the McConnell... Uh, I can't remember which is which now. There was like Majesty Elizabethan or Majesty Elizabeth, all the, the attempts at trying to recreate Elizabethan mixture, I didn't like any of them, and I did not recommend them. And I'm sure there have been other blends, I just can't think of any off the top of my head right now, that I tried and did not like. So they're out there. There are definitely some of them, but typically if I've gotten a blend and I'm going to review it, it's because I've heard good things and I want to try it. So I don't purposefully look out, look out for things that I don't like. Oh, 
my Captain Black review. I didn't like that and I didn't recommend it. So there are definitely some out there, some that I've tried and just didn't like. But thanks for all the questions, gang. We have one more and this one is interesting. Um, and it's one that I don't really know exactly how to respond to, but I will try. This is from Zaka Zack. Zack says, Dear Bradley, this is a little personal, but I feel it needs to be shared. Perhaps it could help someone else going through something similar. My fiance of three years just left me. Her reasons were she needed to, quote, find herself. I'm currently lost, depressed, and heartbroken. It was also unexpected, and there were no telltale signs it was going to happen. My question for you is, have you ever been suddenly heartbroken? If so, how did you overcome it? And what were some words of, what are some words of advice that you could share in the midst of the chaos? Thanks and all the best, Zach. Well, Zach, I'm really sorry to hear about the end of your relationship there. I'd be curious to know how old you are. Um, now this is gonna sound weird, but it doesn't, I'm not going to try to say that it gets easier as you get older. Obviously, you will still feel horribly if something like this happens when you're older, but if you have a few of these under your belt, it is maybe easier for you to bounce back because you realize that these things can happen and that it, as hard as it is and as heart-wrenching as it can be, it isn't the end of the world. You can survive and you may feel awful for a year, for two years, but you will eventually get better. And I think, I guess that sort of answers your question as well. Yes, it has happened to me. I have been heartbroken before. Um, but the only advice I would have for you is just know that as horribly as you may feel at any given moment when this is going on, you will feel better. And that's hard to understand sometimes when you're in the middle of it and it just seems like, ugh, like, and I know, I know that almost physical feeling of just being completely heartbroken and just feeling like there's no point. But as hard as it may be to see, it can get better, you can move on. Um, advice about how to deal with a specific situation, I would say if, if someone left you in the lurch, um, don't try to hold on to that. Let that clean break happen. Don't even really communicate with the person for a while. Give yourself some space because a lot of people have a tendency to sort of not even consciously lead people on where they're still used to having that connection as well. And even though they've decided to move on, they still may they may backslide every once in a while and they may contact you and say, hey, maybe let's hang out again. But if they've already made that decision, maybe, you know, maybe there's a chance sometime in the future you get back together, but you don't want to have that in your mind. You just want to think of it, okay, this is a clean break. I'm going to try to get on with my life. Don't, don't allow yourself to be drawn in again. Um, and just focus on some of the things that you love, things that give you joy. If you have hobbies that you like to pursue, interests like that, just to try to take your mind off it, try to surround yourself with friends, any other kind of social connections that you have, and just know it will get better. Um, but gang, thanks for the question, Zach, and I'm sorry about that. But gang, that's it for the questions. That's it for this Sunday stuff and things, except ugh, for the very best part of the show, I'm dropping things off the back of my amp here. Um, and that is where I thank our Patreon supporters, gang, I am so appreciative of the people who support the channels on Patreon. It makes so much possible. It makes me being able to get new blends to review, or it allows me to get new blends to review. It allows me to pay for the camera equipment, the lighting, the stuff I have here. Um, it just really, really helps out, especially for any of the tea-related videos that can't be monetized on the channel. I really appreciate it. There is a link in the description box below if you would like to support the channels on Patreon. But every week we shout out those who have already made that decision at $25 or more. People like Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, Glenn, Jason Buckner, Jen Oside, John Leone, Christian Kovacs, Joshua Jackson, Gloria Phillips, Ryan McFadden, Matt Marino, and Joe Heafy, and the Maniac. The crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month. People like Peter Straub, our good friend, Bob McGee, and David Gudrew. 
Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you all so much for watching. Please stay tuned uh, for on Wednesday when we will do the guitar video where I talk about how bad I am at guitar and how I want to get better at it. We will also have the Valheim series continuing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Stuff and Things Plays. And then next week will be the Esoterica Stonehaven First Impressions video. But until next time, tell me it again. I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. Mm -mm 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 -mm.